I have prepared a small application, which doesn't really do anything yet. We just have a design button here, and behind it should be the designer call. First, we will try to bind to a SQL Server database using list and label. So I need access to both the SQL Server and list and label. That's the first thing I'm going to do here. I go to the NuGet package manager here and say, manage NuGet packages. And here you can already see various packages that we supply. By the way, you can also see our new logo here. We also have different flavors here. This is now the enterprise flavor, which I think we introduced in version 28 in a subversion. The special thing about these enterprise packages is that they include all unmanaged dependencies. Usually such nugget packages contain only managed assemblies, or at least mostly, and that's also the case with ours, which don't have the enterprise suffix. In this case, however, all dependencies are included. This idea came up in our forum, which I would like to advertise at this point, forum.combit.net. You can find us there at any time. In our forum, there's the idea place, and there was a discussion about how to get the whole thing running on a build server. And our answer was, these enterprise packages, because the normal packages need a list and label installation on the system, which now works quite badly on the Azure DevOps server, for example. That's why you would use these enterprise packages. There would be no need to do that here, but I wanted to show them to you because I think they are so cool. Now, we want to connect to an SQL database, which means I need the SQL connection data provider. We see that various data providers are included. These are not all. I will show you a brief overview later. This SQL connection data provider is there to bind me to a Microsoft SQL database. We can see below that it also has list and label 29 as a dependency. This means that if I upload this one package, I have both packages, the main package with the main assembly, which I definitely need for design, print, and all that. And this connection package here to bind me to the SQL database. Small spoiler at this point. We see already .NET 8 and its dependencies here. In version 29, we will introduce native support for .NET 8, the next LTS version of the .NET framework. We cheated a bit with .NET 7 because the .NET 6 assemblies worked wonderfully under .NET 7. That's why they weren't real .NET 7 assemblies, but you could still use them. They still work under .NET 8, but since it's an LTS version from Microsoft, we've made sure that it's compiled with the latest SDK. In other words, these are real .NET 8 assemblies. My example here is .NET 6. But it doesn't matter. The NuGet package manager takes care of that. And I just click here on install and confirm that I want to have these dependencies and also the license terms. So now I have created this connection to list and label, and we can now start to put some functionality behind this button, which you saw briefly earlier. And I would like to call the designer here on the button design. In other words, the first thing I do is to build an exception handler around it. Why? Not because something always goes wrong with list and label, but because we make sure that all types of returns that could now be of interest to the application are handled centrally as exceptions. For example, user termination or a misconfiguration. Or if something goes wrong, I don't know, two people print the same preview file and the path they print to is the same. Then, he simply receives a sharing violation. For example, the file is already occupied. These things are delivered as exceptions. And the nice thing about it is that I can intercept it at a central point and put my central error handling behind it, which actually makes the whole thing very simple and intuitive. Well, what I want to do first is to create our main component. I'll put it in a using statement. And that is this list label component here. Why am I putting this in a using statement? We also have unmanaged dependencies, as I mentioned earlier with the enterprise packages. In other words, this vast amount of resources that are also used, window handlers, front handlers, printer DCs, and so on, should be cleaned up in the same thread. And that is very important if you don't want to catch any resource leaks here. So you can also create resource leaks in .NET with unmanaged resources this way. 
And of course, you don't want that. They may be tiny, but in a 24-7 application, you would notice them at some point. So use this using pattern. Then it will be called in the same thread and not by the garbage collector dispose of that component. And so those resources will be cleaned up as well. Right? And then I'll call up our designer here and catch any exceptions that may occur. We derive all our exceptions from list label exception. You probably know that you shouldn't catch a global exception, so not just exception EX. That's why we have a common base class, and that way you can make sure that you can catch everything that can go wrong around list and label here. Now for this example, I can display this exception message in the message box here. Of course, you can make it nicer with some kind of log file, something centralized or something like that. You can work with your own loggers. We also support things like log4net or something like that. Although it just got some bad press, not the log4net, but the log4j. So sometimes it's better to have as few dependencies as possible. So you can just choose. I'll just take my message box here and compile it. Let's see what happens. It's compiling, which is a good sign. Let me start the application and click on the button. So what do we get? We get a message box. This is exactly the exception handler that we have just built. And that tells me, okay, something important is still missing, namely the data source. And that is a special feature. You know that list and label doesn't have the option in the designer itself to add a database here and another on top. The database for the designer and also for the report is provided by the application which has huge advantages when it comes to rights management and security vulnerabilities so that users don't look at data via reporting that they're not actually entitled to. But it means that I now have to connect a data source here. That's what I want to do here. And we already talked about it earlier. It's going to be in SQL data source, and I've prepared a little snippet. SQL connection is the name of the snippet, and I'll run through it briefly. The first thing I do here is to instantiate a connection string builder. <laughs> it simply receives information about the server, which is the machine that I'm on, and the SQL Express instance at this place. Then the user SA with the sensationally exciting password, demo SQL own. Of course, you wouldn't do that in the production application. So of course, you can work with Windows authentication or something like that. It doesn't matter now. That's not our class at all. But here for the demo, we just took away the simplest one. I am connecting to the Nordwin database here. We build a connection based on this connection string, which is assembled here. And only from here does it continue with list and label again. This SQL connection data provider is instantiated with the connection as a constructor parameter. Now I can choose to display everything, like tables and views, or just the tables. I've decided to simply display the tables here so that it's even clearer later on. So now I've already coded everything I need to code here. I have the connection to list and label. I have the connection to the SQL server. The last thing I have to do now is to feed list and label with this data source. That means I'm going to make another ll.data source equal provider. And that should really be it. Let's give it a go and see if we've got it right. I click on the design button. Now I get the selection dialog. Here I could select a predefined report if I had one, but I'll create a new one here and then find myself here in our design interface. 